Welcome to EPG Patshala. We are in this module going to discuss a play by Lorraine Hansbury, A Raisin in the Sun. I am Miladri Chatterjee, Professor, Department of English, University of Kalyani, West Bengal. Lorraine Hansbury's play, A Raisin in the Sun, is of great historic significance. It is of great historic significance because it is regarded as being one of the most important plays that we think of when we are talking about the civil rights movement in America. What is the civil rights movement? The civil rights movement is really the movement which is about granting of civil rights to the African Americans. Those people who were once called Negroes, then they were called black and now are referred to as African American. So, what we look at is therefore how during the 1950s there was a certain galvanization of the African American part of the US population. There was an awareness that the African Americans may have ceased to be slaves, but there were newer structures of oppression, there were newer structures of repression, there were newer structures of exclusion from which they were suffering. 1950s therefore becomes a rather important and rather tumultuous decade because this is when the African Americans absolutely decide that they have had enough and an aggressive civil rights movement begins to happen. Not only is this voiced at the street level, that is to say marches, demonstrations, but a lot of literature, a lot of art is also created to bolster this demand for civil rights, full rights, full citizenship. So during the 1950s, a lot of changes were sweeping across America. And these changes primarily had to do with the demand for rights. There were the African Americans who were leading very much this struggle for human rights when they were actually taking to the streets and they were demonstrating and protesting against the way in which they felt excluded from the mainstream of America. Among the plays and novels and poems and short stories and essays that were subsequently written to aid and in support of the civil rights movement, perhaps one of the most important ones is Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun. So if we think about post-war African-American drama, then Lorraine Hansberry's Raisin in the Sun becomes perhaps one of the most important plays that can be referred to. This is also very often regarded as the first African-American play that is produced on Broadway. It was produced in 1959. It ended up winning the Best American Play Award from the New York Drama Critics Circle. Now let us talk a little bit about Lorraine Hansberry. She was born on 19th of May, 1930. She grew up in Chicago's Southeast, Southside. She was the youngest of four children. Her father was a successful real estate broker and she lived in a relatively wealthy by neighborhood standards. A Raisin in the Sun. This is a play which, as I told you, was first produced in 1959. You can think of it as social drama because it touches on many burning issues of the day, hitherto not treated in the theatre. It ran continuously for nine months on Broadway and she also wrote a screenplay for it. Her second play, The Sign in Sidney Burstein's Window, dealt with social issues such as prejudices against Jews and homosexuals in the contemporary world. Now let us look a little more closely at the features of Lorraine Hansberry's theatre or Lorraine Hansberry's drama. In all the works of Lorraine Hansberry, we find the need for understanding each other. For her, it is the lack of understanding that sows the seeds of separation. Behind the facade of militant agitation that rings through her plays, Hansberry evinced genuine artistic talent by overcoming the simple emotional possibilities of social drama. 
Her characters do not live in isolation, but form a part of the whole process where things have fallen apart. I would want to, therefore, talk a little bit about what is meant when we talk about the artistic talent which overcomes simple emotional possibilities of social drama. Let us pause over there for a little bit. You must understand that social drama very often revolves around particular social issues. In this case, the social issue that is being dealt with is, of course, the demand for civil rights on the part of the African Americans. So therefore, plays, novels, short stories, essays that are written on social issues tend to have simple emotional energies. But over here, what Lorraine Hansbury has done is that she has complicated it. Not only is the play about a demand for civil rights, but she has also added other layers to the play. So therefore, A Raisin in the Sun does not simply remain a play about the African American in the 50s America. It also becomes about various other things. It becomes about family. It becomes about personal ambition. It becomes about relationships inside and outside the family. So there are several levels at which one can study the play. How does African-American drama begin? Well, we can go as far back as the time when they had what is called reviews. Reviews were a form of theatrical entertainment that included music and dance. From the 1920s, the lives of black people were articulated by white authors such as Eugene O'Neill, Paul Green. And then, with the emergence of the Harlem Renaissance, there was an absolute explosion of African-American writing. And one of the most important figures of that Harlem Renaissance was, of course, Langston Hughes. And I think we need to talk about Langston Hughes because it is from one of Langston Hughes's poems that the play takes its title. During the 1940s, the establishment of the American Negro Theatre gave a solid foundation for the efflorescence of African-American drama. 1960s, as you very well know, was a time of great social and cultural upheaval. The optimistic image of America as the leader of the free world received a blow. John F. Kennedy, of course, encouraged civil rights and black power movements, for which he also received a lot of censorship and a lot of censuring. At that time also emerged the heroism of somebody like Martin Luther King with his credo of nonviolence, which inspired black men and women. So by the time we come to the A Raisin in the Sun, the play, we have to therefore understand that this play, A Raisin in the Sun, is coming just the year before the Kennedy presidency. So this is a very, very important time. It's a time when the black civil rights movement is gathering a lot of strength and the arts is responding to it. So we have to keep that in mind. What is happening in A Raisin in the Sun? What is the plot? Well, the play circles around the life of a working class black family living in Chicago's South Side in the 1950s. It focuses on the younger family, younger being the surname, younger family who live from hand to mouth. So they are clearly economically disadvantaged. They don't have much money. They're quite poor. The family is excited about how they will spend a $10,000 insurance check uh, because it has, uh, we have, it has received the check. The family has got the check after the death of the father. And this is where the real tension in the family starts because everybody has their own ideas as to how the money should be spent because each member of the family has a dream. And so therefore that dream is connected to the spending of the money. And there is a complete failure in coming to an unanimous decision as to exactly how the money would be spent. Right at the top of the family is the mother, Lena Younger, who is referred to as Mama or Mama. Lena Younger opposes the plan. She wants to buy a house that has been her lifelong dream. Ruth. Walter's wife 
is at a loss as she gets pregnant and fears that a new member might exacerbate the problems of the family. Much against her own wish, she wants an abortion. Benita, Walter's sister, aspires to be a doctor and wants to use the money for that purpose. Ruth requests Lena to give some portion of the money to Walter. However, she refuses and instead puts a down payment on a house. On learning that Walter is very upset, she yields and tells him that he can take the rest of the money and lay by something for Benita's education. Things take a different turn when the whole family is visited by the guest. There is a guest, Karl Lindner, who offers the younger family a huge amount of money to buy the house that Lena has bought because this is the house that is there in a place where African Americans are not wanted. This, I think, is where we first come across the racial divide that is there in 50s America. Remember that this is a house that they have bought with their own money and they have bought it in a neighborhood where they are very happy but unfortunately the neighbors do not want a black family to live in that particular on that particular street the family members fly into a rage and drive him away another shock comes to the younger family when they learn that the money walter invested has been stolen this puts the family under serious pressure Extreme penury almost drives Walter to accept Lindner's offer and get out of the difficult situation. However, Walter overcomes this tragedy with resilience in the teeth of great difficulty and eschews misplaced values only to learn new identity and courage. So we are looking at the way in which this particular family, the family of the younger, they have resisted even the tremendous attraction of money and they have stood by their own uh, beliefs. Now, here we can talk about the significance of the title. As I told you before, the title is derived from a poem by Langston Hughes. Now, if we can actually look at that poem, then that would help us understand. So, before we look at the significance of the title, if we can look at the previous slide, then you can find that um, where exactly the poem comes from. So this is what the poem is. Let me read out the poem to you. So this is the poem by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it sink like, a, like the rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? So, if we can now move on to the significance of the title, we will see that this title therefore comes from Langston Hughes's poem. The dream motif which runs through the play is highlighted by the title. Hansbury, a black American herself, tries to project through the play the dormant dream that needs to be fulfilled to nullify the black-white binary. So she is actually talking about a society where these separations on the basis of race, on the basis of skin color, would not be valid anymore. But race is not the only issue in the play. There is, of course, a substantial representation of the gender issue, by which I mean how do the women operate in the play and indeed how do the, male, how do the men operate in the play. If we look at the matriarch of the family, Mama, Mama typifies the stereotype of the black matriarch who usually considers the black male as undependable and prioritizes the idea of motherhood. She would protect her children against all odds. While Mama represents the typical black matriarch, Ruth and Benita are modern new women who do not suppress their emotions. They are more vocal than Lena in articulating their desires. While Walter objects to Benita's education, lest it should put more pressure on the family's financial condition, she does not give up on her dream. She is bold enough to challenge her brother in pursuance of her dream. Now, what is this American dream that we have been talking about for so long? The American dream is a rather important concept. This dream derives its origin perhaps from Jefferson's Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, 
and the pursuit of happiness. To put it simply, this notion of American dream posits that every single human being, irrespective of their origin, is capable of rising from rags to riches by dint of hard work, perseverance and uprightness. However, writers in the 20th century hold a contrary notion to this dream. Time and again, they have depicted through their literary works that dream and reality are at loggerheads. And you may already be familiar with F. Scott Fitzgerald's text, uh, The Great Gatsby, in which there is a very serious interrogation of that particular dream. Now, how does the American dream operate in A Raisin in the Sun? This, I think, is rather important because I think A Raisin in the Sun also critiques the great American dream. Through the plight of the younger family during the 1950s, Hansberry articulates the ethos of the tumultuous era crisscrossed by nefarious evils of labor problem and housing discrimination. Hansberry, imbued with humane sensibility, tries to come to grips with the harsh reality and promotes group solidarity. The housing discrimination in the North is a harsh commentary on the great American dream. There are, of course, several uses of symbolism. Symbols are objects that stand for something else. In drama, the employment of symbols enhances the theme and covers the central issue with the resplendence of imaginative insight. A central symbol in the play is Mama's plant. It symbolizes Mama's own existence and her dream. From the beginning of the play, we are aware of the presence of the plant. Mama's act of taking care of the plant is indicative of her act of taking care of the welfare of her children. Money is another important symbol. It stands for the corrupted version of the original American dream that Walter is a victim of, this material world. For him, money can do anything. At the end of the play, realization dawns on him that money is not enough which helps him get over his existential crisis. His act of rejecting the financial offer of Lindney affirms that he has overcome the love of money and he, he starts to eke out a selfhood. So therefore, money is very often regarded as a means through which you can achieve the American dream. But Lorraine Hansberry says very clearly that that may not be the case. Money may not be the solution to all your problems. We now therefore move on to the way in which the, in which the play develops. So if we continue the discussion, then we are going to see that when Lorenz Berry writes the drama with a political, political agenda, she's writing about a political propaganda to show the way out of this impasse. Now, search for identity is also a very important central theme especially in African-American literature. The crisis of identity of the black man, buffeted by the hegemony of white society, drives him into the zones of liminality and non-existence. Racial complexity haunts the black men so much so that it almost drives them to the brink of psychosis. Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun shines a light on this issue through the story of the younger family. Identity formation is a continuous process which is also constructed by societal norms. So when Hansberry is writing this play, this is clearly a political propaganda to, which, which aims to show a way out of this impasse. What we also find in this play is the search for the self. And the search for the self is most clearly uh, exemplified by the character of Walter Lee. In the beginning of the play, we find that he has internalized the racism prevalent then and loathes himself. He has a distorted dream that equates money with success and considers mammon worship as the motto of life. What is internalization? Internalization is when you start to believe something about yourself which others have told you. So if somebody has told you that you are unworthy of respect, if somebody has told you that you are unworthy of honor, if somebody has told you that you are unworthy of love and if you start to believe that, if you genuinely start to believe that nobody can love you, nobody can respect you, nobody can honor you, then what you have done is you have internalized it.
And what very often happens in the case of the African American is that they internalize everything that the whites tell them about themselves. This used to be the case. Fortunately, this is not the case anymore. Now, of course, the African Americans are very serious and very self-confident and they know that no matter what the white people tell them, they have their respect, they have their dignity, they have their honor. Raisin in the Sun, therefore, is not only about racial complexity, but also about vindicating the dignity of the black man. And this is enunciated by the transformation of Walter towards the end of the play, when he overcomes the inferiority complex. So let us do a conclusion then, as to how this is going to work out when we start to think about the play. So what are the, what are the main features of the play? Civil rights, demand for respect, by uh, the African Americans. This is also about a person's individual search for dignity in their own life, the right to choose your own profession, the right to choose where you live, the right to choose the neighborhood in which you live. So this is basically about how you perceive yourself how you construct your identity and how that identity should in no way be interfered with by anybody else. So when we look at Raisin in the Sun, this is really about taking pride in the identity that you have constructed for yourself. Thank you.